Right, right. Hey, we are live here at Vaginal Fantasy Book Club. What is this thing, you ask? Well, that's a good question. It is a book club where monthly, me and my awesome co-hosts, we read a uh, romance genre book and discuss it. And sometimes we get to the alt book as well. Um, we have uh, the re regular suspects here. Bonnie Burton. Hello. We have Kyla Casey. Hello. Veronica Belmont with the lovely Harry Potter glasses. Oh, they're not round. No, they're, they're adorable. They're cute. Thank, Thank you. Book club. <laughs> And, and, and we ask, oh, oh, that's a good question. What is, oh, oh, who has it open? Someone has, has their video open. open. Again. God, it's you. Is it you? Oh, you. You're watching um, yourself. And <laughs> as a guest, we have a special guest for the first time for Vaginal Fantasy Hangout. It is Hannah Hart. Yay. 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 Hello. Yay. Hello. Yay. Hello. 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 <laughs> I, you know that people p copied your thumb, your fingerprint, and now they're going to impersonate. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, they're they are going to have a whole lot of debt, and collection agencies will be hounding them. Jokes <laughs> <laughs> uh, on you. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Hannah. Uh, you know, remember we had this discussion literally a year ago that we were going to come on if we uh, if we read what what just happened. That oh, something uh, made a rude noise. I shut my window. No. <laughs> oh, and Bonnie is pouring a whole bottle of wine into a glass. Let's yeah, oh, snap. Bonnie, you have to make sound so that it shows you. Go, 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 go. You don't understand. This is the giant, giant wine glass that's as yeah. big as my head. Oh, my. I got to get one of those. It's a, you know what, Hannah? You can get them at Target. Really? Yeah. 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 Oh. It's called wine in a, it's called wine bottle in a glass. It's really cryptic name. My life is forever changed. Cool. <laughs> I love um, it. Oh, wow, Bonnie. Damn. I know. By, the, by about 8.45, we'll definitely see the effect. Yeah, you'll that. notice. Yeah. <laughs> what, so, what are we all drinking tonight, actually? Let's go down the list. What kind of wine are we drinking? Uh, okay, so I just poured an entire bottle of Harvest Girl. I got it just for you, Hannah, because it's got a cute girl, scantily clad. <laughs> well, it's for all of us. Let's be honest. It's a win-win for everybody. And that was a free, that was free wine. Uh, one of our fans, Brian, gave me this at Comic Con, so that was free wine. And then, oh, in nice. honor of Felicia, I also have tiny wine. Oh. So I hit both. That's oh, awesome. You I go both reach ways. through the internets and give her the tiny wine. Yeah, I wish you could go. Get that take it, Felicia. Take it. Take it. Grab it. Grab it. Oh my! Oh, it's like ring. It'd be like, oh my god, that was amazing! Oh. Yay! <laughs> That was Can like I a magic it? trick on on. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's how Google Hangout works for us. Mm -hmm. cool. Yes, I met a guy who gave me a, his business card on fire yesterday. What? At the gym. Was that what? what? You know he what? was like, "Here's my card." Whoosh. Guy working out at the gym. That's pretty yeah. hot. What? I was I was Your impressed gym is and also different than my gym. Yeah, is it at Hogwarts? Yes, it is a gym at Hogwarts. It's pretty amazing. But I digress. I'm sorry. Your gym is different from my gym in that it exists. <laughs> did you not go to the gym? Do I not go to the gym? No, I yeah. never go to the gym. Oh, I God, I hate you. I work out the old-fashioned way. Yeah. Mm. Welcome to the gun show. Yeah. Tickets right. available at the kiosk. <laughs> I, I hate all of you. I'm vegan. I work out all the time. I'm still 20 pounds overweight. <laughs> Hey, me too. The only the only gym I know is my favorite bartender at Lucky Thirteen. <laughs> All right, let's not body hate. We're not here to oh, body no, hate. I love We're not here to body I'm hate. I'm very healthy. I'm a very healthy lady. You're I'm beautiful. not even close to healthy. Thank you. <laughs> what else is everyone else drinking? Hannah, what are you drinking um, tonight? I've got uh, I've got in a little Scotch glass, which Ooh. is very very cute. I'm drinking a very rare occasion. I uh, hear uh, my wine club, clubw.com/harto. Has sent me a bottle <laughs> of Sauvignon Blanc, um, and so I'm giving it a whirl. Uh, and since I don't really like white wine that much, it's not going to be a drunken night for me. That's my no. little trick. Oh. That's my trick to myself. It's like if I don't want to get drunk, I'll order a beer or wine because I know I'll be or white wine because I know I'll be like, mmm, mmm, mmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's sad. I can't. I can't drink red wine. So I guess we're wine buddies, and that we're opposite. Really? Yeah. yeah. Headache? I don't understand. Why can't you 
Is it headaches? Things, like, yeah, they give people headache. headaches. Yeah. Okay. yeah. It's kind of a drag. What about you, Kylo? Kylo, what are you drinking today? Uh, I have a little tiny bit of rosé, um, and then I have a big, a big pi pink pirate cup of ice water because oh. I have a cold, so I'm not really drinking. So. Oh, you could do hot toddy. You could do I, tea and whiskey. I could. And honey and lemon. But it's really hot here, so. Oh. And That's why she's got a Beyonce a fan. I know. So alcohol hasn't sounded that great to me lately. So I'm just sort of. Uh, Where are especially you? After this so hot. Portland, Oregon. Portland, so hot. It's just we're having a really hot summer. It's really weird. Like, I don't I've know, know what that's Portland, like. Kyla, this year I want to come up and visit. Yes, please. Oh my God, I'll take you this everywhere. This week on False Promises. <laughs> I know, I know. And I'm going to quit drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you certainly uh, made up for it at VidCon. Uh, what about you, Veronica? You guys I'm, were, yeah. I was I'm what? Sure. What? Drinking heavily at VidCon? <laughs> <laughs> we were, no, I'm the saying it's an awesome thing. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> we were coping. We we're yeah, coping we were... with Teen Con 2013. Yeah. Hey, I, VidCon's great, but I nothing will make yeah, you I feel love... older in your life <laughs> than going to VidCon. At VidCon. Yeah, and you're you're what? You're 26. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I oh, learned hi. that from the LA wow. Times today. <laughs> <laughs> what? Anyway, I'm drinking. Hang time, uh, Pinot Noir, uh, 2011, from from right here in sunny California, and it's quite delicious. Thank you. Ooh, we'll see how it mixes with my migraine medicine. Yay. <laughs> so Kyla's sick, and you've got a migraine. What else is going on with everyone tonight? I mean, Bonnie, she... Bonnie is here to bring it. She poured an entire bottle of wine. <laughs> <to her>. yeah. <laughs> and I'm healthy. I'm healthy. I had an allergic reaction to my Katy Perry uh, eyelash eyeglass glue eyelash glue. Oh, yeah, that was, you didn't tell bomb. me that's what yeah. caused it. Yeah. <laughs> now it all makes yeah, I had sense. Yeah, we call it drag queen rash, where sometimes if you get uh, false eyelash glue in your ducts, in your ear ducts, not quacky kind, um, then you'll have an allergy. Not that we own ducts, but you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so yeah, so I'm fine. So I'm healthy and drinking a lot, and yay. Yay. I don't have any cold... Yay. I don't have any virals. I don't know. No, that's good. Okay, so guys, we're going to start discussing our book in a minute. And uh, after we start discussing it, if you post comments in the chat beside that, we'll try to uh, pick out questions to address if you post them. Oh, wait, um, Alicia, you didn't oh. say what you were drinking. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I'm drinking whatever is in this tiny bottle of wine, which is uh, <laughs> it's a Pinot Grigio. There you go. There's not, a lot of, there's not a lot of choice when you only drink tiny wines. So this but there is, is. Well, it depends. What are those amazing twist-off ones? Yeah, the yeah. Sutter Home has them in all flavors. They're just not very uh, classy. Oh, well, I do like classy. Okay. That's why she invited us all to be a part of this beautiful show. That's <laughs> your fancy, which my mom thought was porn for a while. Anyway, um, I'm going to cool. give a shout-out to the Hangouts that happened this month. We have local meetups. Uh, if you guys cool. want to join the book club, we have a Goodreads forum and you join up and everybody talks uh, about the books and everything under the sun there on the forums and a lot of people meet up. So um, last month uh, Beaver Dreams met um, in Canada, and they met up in San Francisco, New York City, Dayton, Ohio and Ottawa and then wow. this next month on August 9th there's a UK Google Hangout, there's an August 10th Denver Hangout, August 11th San Francisco Hangout, North Hollywood on August 18th, Dayton, Ohio on August 25th, and New York City on August 31st. So if you want to join up with one of those groups or create your own, just go to the forums and there's a local hangout area that you can um, post your event. To. Wow, that's so smart. Felicia, how do you moderate your forums? We have a couple of awesome moderators. Vicky is one who uh, maintains a lot of it. And I don't know, it's... It's a Goodreads forum, so it's not like there's not a lot of spam on it. Um, oh, okay, great. Do, do you have okay. problems with your uh, forums? I don't have a forum, but I want to have a forum. Oh, right now, you could have a forum. The heart of sexual community is just a Tumblr ta hashtag, and then that ranges anywhere from like you know graphic fan fiction to hey guys, I want to do a volunteer event. So I'm scrolling Ooh. through, and it's yeah. like, okay, they're doing volunteer. Oh my god, I'm tied to the bed. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Especially when you the two. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I, have no idea. I don't know if you need both of those things. Um, I would suggest creating a vanilla forum on your uh, 
your uh, your website, and then you can um, have you can basically community members will do. That's how we do it on the Geek and Sundry forum. We have community mm -hmm. members be moderators, and you don't you only need a couple people to go through every day and sort of take down spam and other things like, like that. Uh, like let's it. talk afterwards. Hmm. Hmm. Anyway. Okay. Uh, okay. So our main book this month. This month's theme was LGBT. We wanted to uh, celebrate DOMA being uh, overturned and pride and everything like that. So that was why we picked this month's theme, or it was July's theme. And uh, we're very excited to have Hannah join because I mentioned to her I loved Tipping the Velvet. It's one of my favorite books. And, and I mentioned to her that was one of the worst movies I'd ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this, this is the book. Yep, so here's the book, and I will read the description, and we'll get into uh, what everybody thought about it. But here it is. The heroine of this audacious first novel knows her destiny and seems content with it. Her place is in her father's seaside restaurant, shucking shellfish and stirring soup. Um, at night, she often ventures to the new nearby music hall. Not that she has illusions of being more than an audience member, but the moment she spies a new male impersonator, still something of a curiosity in uh, England, 1888, her years of innocence come to an end and life transformation begins. It is a historical romance, which we don't do a lot of historicals, and a lot of people debated whether this was even... Oh, we have two people holding the book up. Um, a lot of people debated whether this was even a vaginal fantasy book because we mostly do fantasy and sci-fi and all that stuff. Mm. Um, I brought that up, yeah. You brought that up. Well, whatever. Because I'm a snob. You're a snob, snob about historicals or what? No, I'm a snob about sci-fi fantasy. <laughs> it's definitely not sci-fi and it's definitely not fantasy. That's what <laughs> I think okay. you could say it's fantasy because... The chances of lower class and upper class Ooh. meeting up like this in Victorian London probably wouldn't happen. Or I consider Dickens uh, fantasy because half of those, there's no way half of those relationships would ever happen. So fantasy. I thought you were about to say a dirty <laughs> word, but you were just saying Charles Dickens. I'm behaving. <laughs> That no, I know. It's just of an awful you already started going off. Uh, you can consider it fantasy because of everyone's proper hygiene. Yes, it's I agree. True. Yeah. Or I, I mean, we could get into this later. The historical accuracy of the lesbian sort of underground community. Mm, yeah. Right. Uh, right. A lot of people brought that up. But by the way, we've done historical before. We did El Eloisa James last year. So. Um, we sometimes we'll add historical in. We're never going to do like a contemporary romance about a guy who, like a NASCAR driver, okay? I assure you that. <laughs> Does that exist? I think historical romance counts as fantasy because it's a fantasy to me. Any kind of costume drama, any, it's, you know, it's not reality. It's historical, it's it's historical reality. fiction. It's historical yeah. fiction. It's, it's not our reality and it wasn't their reality. So I'm not agreeing with you. I'm saying it's historical fiction. It's different. <laughs> No, you're great. That's great that you agree with me, Veronica. Ah! Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for proving my point. I appreciate that. You're welcome. <laughs> and so it begins. <laughs> this, is why, this is when mom and dad fight. This is why I drink a lot of wine. <laughs> Wait, Wait, am I mommy or fight? daddy? <laughs> well, you're totally daddy. Definitely <laughs> daddy, Veronica. So Definitely. Veronica, you got daddy written all over you. <laughs> In a good way. I don't know what that means. Yeah, that's all right. I'll explain okay. it. You're <laughs> You're a little um, more aggressive. Uh, but I, I do want to mention, <laughs> since we read the book, and uh, everybody knows I am uh, have a Benedict Cumberbatch problem. Is oh, yeah. He's in the very bad tipping the velvet BBC production, which is not really following the book that well. So. Oh, I love oysters. <laughs> oh, I love oysters. Yeah, exactly. I haven't seen the movie. I'm so sad. No, I don't just three episodes. It. It's, like, it's like a mini series. So there's just three episodes, like Sherlock. Okay. Only Cumberbatch is really young in it, and he's really not sexy and goofy. Um, but I did uh, post the link. Uh, I'm going to uh, try to you... find it. I'm going to try okay. to find it. Okay, so let's go down the line and say whatever we thought about the book in general, and then we'll get into detail about the, the characters and everything as I find the Cumberbatch. I want to share, screen share the picture of him as a young, young lad. Bonnie, yeah. we'll start from the left. What did I, you I, think? I, so I liked it. I um, I read it when it came out. So I read it, I think, in the late 90s. So 1998 oh, wow. is when it was published. I must have read it 1999, I think. Um, and I really liked it. I, I really love historical fiction. And even though it's probably not totally accurate, um, I like that whole lower class meeting up with high society and... Um, I'm a big fan of the history of male impersonators. 
during mm -hmm. that time and during the 20s. So I was always a big fan of uh, Victor Victoria and all that. Right. Stuff. So this, I just, I loved it. I thought it was a great book, and it really got me into, like, I got in into it uh, a lot more than I. Why is Why is Kyla looking at weird? At I'm me? literally no, I'm not. I'm actually looking at Hannah. It just looks like I'm looking at you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm seeing Kyla's hair blow and her looking confused. I'm like, am I, <laughs> am I scaring everyone or is Hannah you're just, just saying something You're just you're talking so loudly that it's blowing my hair. No, you're oh, not. right. Sorry. <laughs> no, I'm okay. listening to you. <laughs> uh, no, I really liked it. Um, I thought the characters were pretty interesting. It just, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of, of uh, Dickens, and so his characters are very uh, cliche and, well, I wouldn't say cliche, but over the top. And these characters, like, you had Diana, who was, like, this over-the-top, scary, wealthy woman who had issues. And then you had, obviously, Kitty being the male impersonator. And Walter, it's in Florence, seeming to be, like, the, you know, the innocent or whatever. It just, there seemed to be some pretty ardent, straightforward characters that weren't too changing, changing it up. So if you like that kind of fish, fiction, I think you'll like this. <laughs> I, I thought the sex scenes were decent. I mean, it wasn't like dragons in a cave smutty, but I thought it was still really, it, caught, it kept my attention, so I liked it. I actually thought we, I was, you know, we were being kind of classy reading this book as opposed to the other stuff we read. <laughs> it's nice to be sweet like, classy, they, isn't it? It feels this, good inside. They, they teach this classy. book. They teach this book in class in college now, so it's like. They I do. Know, like, oh, this is like we're doing a college course edition of Vaginal Fancy. Oh, I wish we had read that in my masculinities class. <laughs> yeah, I feel yeah. like this is a Is that where you learned to be a daddy? <laughs> yeah, that's where I learned how to be a daddy. Actually, I think that's really funny that you guys say that because all of my girlfriends ever since we were in college have always said that I'm like the boyfriend of the group. If someone doesn't have a boyfriend, I'm like the de facto boyfriend. I'll like open their doors for them and like threaten to break other people's kneecaps and, and things like that. So wow. I guess all it's... Of my, all of my female friends have always said that I'm, I'm like the girlfriend waiting for them to pay for dinner. <laughs> We can have it always. <laughs> Guys, here here is Benedict Cumberbatch in his youth. Oh in my God! Yes. Yeah. Uh, he's he's Henry, not, right? He's her brother, Henry. Henry. Well, okay, so here's the thing. He's a natural he's a boyfriend. He's a he's natural redhead. Yeah, which is and gross. Most people don't realize he's a ginger. So he's <laughs> ginger badge. Ginger is badge. He really? But I love that he's a redhead. Don't say that. No, so what? No, I love redheads. I just meant as scared of gingers. No. What? I love not what? I love no. What? What? Ah. What? What? No. No one said anything, Bonnie. <laughs> no, you keep saying something, and Kyla says, no, 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 that's not what I meant. I thought no, you were because fighting. She didn't say anything. I um, didn't so, fight with a anyway, guest So, Benedict Cumberbatch is a natural curly redhead. That's why it shocks all of us when we see him. Uh, and he's goofy looking in that picture, so, you know. Would I look good with dark hair like that? Because he looks so much better with dark hair. You, you look so good in any... Oh, I, you look... I think you would look good as a brunette or dark hair. I don't know if platinum blonde would be... Oh, no, that would be bad for no, me. No, but I love the red that you have now, too. It's okay. really, there's a lot of gold in it. It's really mm -hmm. pretty. Hannah, what the do you coppery. think about the book? Not your hair? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think about Felicia hair, Hannah? I'm glad that it's all on her head. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't fallen out yet. It will. It will. <laughs> Um, no, what did I think? So when Felicia invited me to join uh, this week's uh, badge fan, um, I was like, yeah, yeah, you guys going to do gay shit? Woo! Oh, stuff. Um, and then she told me it was going to be Tipping the Velvet. And I, um, I I met that with, oh, no, that's like the worst movie I've ever seen. I quote it on like worst like BBC miniseries is, is of all time, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, go read the book. It's one of my favorite books. Oh, no, how could you say that? Say, wait, the book is way better than the miniseries. The book is way more interesting, has so much more going on, frankly, and it's better written than I thought it would be, though it's not like a, you know, obviously. I was a lit major in college, so it's not like a well-written yeah. work. It didn't it doesn't make you feel anything. Um, but it was interesting and very consumable. <laughs> that's, I, mean, that's, that's I don't know why we're laughing at that. Well, like, consumable is a good word. Right? Don't you think? Yeah. It's very followable. It's like, oh, okay. And it was like, it's kind of like, ooh, ooh, ooh. Like, if I was a grandma reading this book, I'd be like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying what? that for you, it wasn't very racy, but for the average person, it would be racy. I don't know. There were, I mean, I'm pretty, I'm pretty prudent. So it was, it was and wasn't racy. 
I don't know. I, I, hold on one second. Ooh. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 Hannah, let's put it in perspective. What do you think the most racy lesbian fiction that you've read is then? Well, I read a, you like a Neptune Sailor Uranus fanfic when I was like 13, Ooh. which was really intense. Okay. I don't know. I mean, you have to understand, like, I grew up reading dirty fanfic, so dirty novels have never even been anywhere near. Like, I, when I was a kid growing up on fanfic, that's your, like, number one exposure to, like, pornographic fiction, right? Yeah. And so it's like... I missed this novels. whole thing. Yeah, they didn't have a fanfic when I was a kid. I, I just had missed this, like, the whole thing. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I remember reading dirty... Like, I remember reading slash fic and fanfic on Usenet, um, and Usenet was pre-web, and that was still Internet. So I remember doing that. And then I had fanfics, like, uh, smutty fanfic pen pals, and so we would do kind of like the so is oh, it your genre? where you like add chapters and send it back and then yeah. I'd add something and send it back. So what did you write about? What did you write about? Oh, mine was all like X Files, Twin Peaks, smut. <laughs> oh God, I've read yeah. some of the best novel length Mulder and Scully fanfic. Like yeah, movies. that is my favorite <laughs> to this day. To this day, it's still my favorite. What yeah. is it too late for me to read fanfic? No, no, it's, it's like, not it's like, too late. Where does one find this? Online. On the internet. On the internet. internet. Yes. But how do you find good fan? Like, how do you discriminate? It's not like it's on Goodreads, is it? Is it, you know? There's self-published fanfic. I don't know. There's that, because you run into the problems with copyright characters and all that. But I think, it, honestly, if you go on Goodreads and start a thread saying what is the top quality fanfic, I bet you'd get mm. a lot of really good suggestions, because there are Goodreads... Forum people are really smart and they understand good literature. I don't think you're gonna get like crap suggestions. So I would say oh, yeah. no, it's like there's like I mean there's like Harry Potter fanfic that's like Oh I, I read like, that. Better than the seventh book. <laughs> yeah. I, I heard the Clarissa Clare, you know, the Mortal Instruments. That was yeah. start, that started as Harry Stephanie Potter. Stephanie Meyer was fanfic. Yeah, that's what Twilight. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. so Fifty Shades of Grey was Twilight. Fifty Shades of Grey was fan well, yeah, totally. So that's interesting. Um, so, Kyla, what did you think? And by the way, uh, the, the, the the fan is blowing a little bit on your mic. So if oh, you could, sorry. Yeah. Um, Turn um, to Beyonce. There. What did, you think about the, what did you think about the book? Uh, I really liked it. I, um, uh, I thought it was kind of like, have you ever read The Crimson Petal in the White? Yes, I was. I was gonna say that. Oh, sorry, I stole it from you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it was like that light. Do you know what I mean? You know, it was it. Yeah. It, it kind of <laughs> like filled that void for me, if you will. <laughs> um, uh, so I, I liked it because I wish there were like nine Crimson Petal in the White books. Um, uh, so yeah, I, I liked it for that reason. And I also, I mean, uh, I read a lot of Anis Nin when I was like, oh yeah, yeah, Anis early twenties. Oh, Diaries of Anis Nin is great. Yeah, uh, the Diaries, not her fiction sucks, but the yeah. diary, her erotic is stupid, but. <laughs> The diaries are amazing. Um, so I read those and Henry Miller growing, you know, like in my early 20s. And then um, uh, and then I took the same, like, Dickens, Victorian lit classes, like, because like, I transferred colleges so many times. I, I took it, like, five times. So, <laughs> so this is kind of, like, my favorite genre, but also my least favorite genre. <laughs> but it's still, it's like, a very familiar world that I love. So I, I really so you get what it. I mean when I say it was really palatable. Like, it was yeah. really, like... Exactly. It was just easy to get into. And right. just, it was like, yeah, like candy. It was really, I liked it a lot. I really enjoyed reading it. Yeah. Veronica, what did you think? And then we'll, we'll, we'll get into... I'm getting invites to uh, fanfic forums on oh, Twitter. God. Hey. <laughs> oh, my God. Veronica, it's fine. I'm, losing, I'm losing my focus. Well, um, yeah, I, think, I think for fanfic, you need to pick what, what genre you... I mean, what show, like, yeah. what, what... I mean, pick something that you're interested in. TNG I would fanfic. Say Game of Thrones, maybe. I would be interested in Game of Thrones. I said TNG fanfic. That's what she knows. Oh, okay. She knows you what she wants. Next generation. If you need Star Trek fanfic, what do you want? Oh. Some Riker Troy? What are you looking for? Yeah, I'd like a little Riker Troy. Yeah. A little yeah. Anzotti. I'm, I'm so glad you said TNG. Yeah, Anzotti. <laughs> yeah, what? I thought yeah. you said Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles at first. Like, I got my acronyms mixed up, and yeah. I'm like, yeah, I want that fiction. Like, there Ninja go. Turtles. <laughs> there you go. Um, well, okay, so the book. So um, at first I, I really liked it. This was kind of my progression. At first I was like, this is really well written. I'm really enjoying the story. Um, the, the, all the stuff in, in uh, White Stable? 
How do you, mm-hmm. what, what, that's where well, she's from? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, where she's from. Yeah, and um, and then after all the kitty stuff happened and she kind of went through her depressive phase and kind of lost her lost her mind for a while there, she kind of came back, she came back as a very different person, Nancy, and... That person I didn't like as much, not because of what she was going through and what she was forced to do, but she just kind of turned into a dick. Like yeah. I don't know how to describe oh, it. Like not oh, like unintended. Not pun intended. Pun intended. <laughs> pun actually <laughs> intended. <laughs> um, and then she kind of comes back around, and and she you know she she meets Flo, and and she kind of like starts this new life, and and she goes with the the mother and and her daughter. She lives yeah. with them for a while, and then she kind of comes back into it. But the unlikable factor for me was difficult to get past, and it wasn't because of the circumstances in her situation. It was because she just kind of got like mean in yeah. a way. I guess life makes you mean sometimes and, and that's yeah. happened to everyone but I just I lost a little bit of my interest there. The sex scenes for me too were like I, I've read a lot of Lady on Lady Erotica and this just did not do it for me. I don't know why. I think it was maybe a little too literary if that makes any yeah. sense. Um, and so I just got I was like okay this is happening. Okay this is happening. Okay. <laughs> Alright that happened. Okay. Well, maybe it's because, I mean, like, do you think that Nan, one of the things I felt was that she was just not someone I was attracted to. Yeah. Like, I don't think I'd be friends with her. Because that's, like, the essence of erotica, right? It's either you are the subject or you're the Mm -hmm. object, right? You're either the, like, aggressor or you're the, you know, the aggressed upon, right? And if you don't relate to Nan and if you don't like the people that she's, uh, engaging with. Do you like my PG-13 terms? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> then you're, Thank you, you. So you, have no, you have no part to you know, project yourself onto. I think so, but I think we've read enough varied characters over the course of this book club that I, I feel if I that, that was one. the issue... I watched the whole Cthulhu hangout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so there, there were a lot of characters in that book that I didn't relate to on any kind of level, but yet it was still a pretty interesting read for me. Um, and so, I don't know, maybe it was just Nan as a person I didn't Maybe I didn't like her. I'm not looking for her to be like a total Mary Sue, but at the same time, it wasn't. I don't need that. I just need someone who I can relate to on some level, I guess. Yeah. I uh, I loved. I really liked the book, but and on my second read, I remember. I think I like Fingersmith better than this one. Fingersmith is another book by this author about thieves, which has one of the best twists in all books, uh, besides Ian Banks, um, one of one of his books, but. Uh, use of weapons, I think, was the. But this one, I agree with you, Veronica. Like, um, I, I had a hard time relating to Nan, um, and therefore the romance of it, um, because basically you're from her point of view, and it's sort of she's the outsider looking into Kitty, mm-hmm. and that relationship is, you know, that is not real. It's kind of toxic underneath, and then mm-hmm. she goes off and does all these horrible things by basically becoming a prostitute, a pretending to be a guy as a prostitute, sort of defacing herself and her and everything she believes in because she's so t- self-destructive about Kitty. And then she goes off with this sort of kind of abusive older woman. Diane, yeah. This under, which Diana. is again, she, Diane, yeah. And yeah. she puts herself through these horrible things. Um, and then she ends up with somebody who can redeem her, but by, the, by that time... You just it's it's hard to be under her skin because she is so damaged underneath and I, that's why I liked it from a literary point of view but from a romance point of view you're like I, I don't know about these sexy scenes because uh, yeah. yeah it doesn't feel right because the pairings didn't feel genuine until the very 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 end of the book and then there's no romance you know what I'm mm-hmm. right I kind of mm-hmm. like the I mean like from just a pure like if you try and give it more indulgent erotica I mean I kind of like the Diana shit or stuff because it's like <laughs> yeah. all right. Like, yeah, you're the little, like, slave for sex. Like, that's not, that's not, sure. You know, aside from, like, the stuff that bothered me about her was the, the social dynamics. Yes. You know, oh, funny. you're terrible. <laughs> yeah, she was horrible, and she was so horrible to that maid. And oh, that, was, like, that was, like, the last straw. I mean, that was... That was pretty sad. I thought Diana was going to come around. Like, I thought she was going to be, like, cold on the surface, and yeah. then they were going to, like, break under her, That's get past that surface, that icy surface, and, like, make her into, like, a more, you know, like, I'm kind of a jerk on the surface, but underneath, yeah. I'm just warm and cuddly and want to be loved. Yeah. But no, it was not, no. not that. <laughs> 
you guys think that the author, what's her name, Sarah Waters, right? Sarah Waters, yeah. Yeah. Do you think that she, in her in the first relationship with Kitty, was trying to, like, parallel, you know, and do, forgive me if I'm getting too, like, kind of, like, ooh, yeah, let's be meta, let's do bird's eye view. But, like, when you, if it, if it were to pertain to the LGBT community, when you're in that first relationship with someone, and then you get all messed up over them, and it reshapes your life, and then you go out and you aren't the best version of yourself, like, if the journey was a parallel of that experience, like where your first heartbreak makes you subsequently, you know, mean to other people, and it's only like the third time around that you really are with somebody that respects you because you've started to respect yourself again, question mark? I mean, no, I love that, and also I've read somewhere that this has a big autobiographical component because wow. she met somebody in a boarding house. Yeah, I didn't know the details. I should have read up on it. I saw it on the Wikipedia briefly, but um, I would be interested to see how that journey is paralleled. But do you think that that's uniquely LGBT, or is that something that... <laughs> oh, my God. There we go. She's, She's sick. Be nice Aww. to her, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you did not get me sick when we were like romping around at our hotel room. I know. Maybe I can't, you got her sick. Especially I when I just I cuddled up next to you and then I just drooled on you. Just I, all over my oh, face yeah. and like inside my ear. And I don't like, know how it, in my eye. If this, eye, eye, this episode, yeah. if this yeah, episode of Vaginal <laughs> Fantasy was like a ro Victorian romance novel, I'm sad to say, Kyla, I think you'd be the first one to die from like tuberculosis. <laughs> You but would. I had I had the consumption. I'm not dead. Yeah, yeah but right. you're a dad. I did have the consumption. Dad's it's so funny, you, you told that story, and then we walked to the elevator, and that's when my throat started to hurt. <gasps> you gave it to me through your I voice. I haven't had it in like six years. It says that that's, you've been just hosting. I'm just constantly just wasting away. I love it. Wait, wait, can we read some Little Women fanfic? Because I want to yeah. that. I would love that, because yeah. that... As a kid, I, like, I was like, get it on, Joe. But it you know what's so happened. funny? Right, it's Joe, not Rory? really my own fanfic. Yeah, when I read, <laughs> when I read Little Women, I, I honestly thought Joe was a lesbian, and I wanted her to be a lesbian, kind of like Joe in Facts of Life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We both to be yeah. lesbians on the show and in the book. Didn't happen in fiction. That's so what's frustrating in real life. about what? being gay. When you're, when you're gay, you just keep waiting for other characters to be gay. Yeah. These characters aren't... You just want someone whose defining attribute isn't their sexuality so much. I mean, like, the way LGBT characters are portrayed in movies and film and books and da-da-da, it's one of two things. They're either, like, you know, depressive suicidal, or they're, like, super sexual. And, like, all they do is talk about their sex. You know? It's like, oh, God. I mean, for the longest time, I thought that Aaron Spelling hated all gays because every time we get a gay character and, like, 90210 or Melrose Place or any of his shows, he killed them off in the most horrific sure way. I'm sure he did hate gays. Well, it's the same thing as geeks. You know, if you see a mainstream oh, geek, they're like the exactly of the glasses, and they're right. I mean, the cliche of a character. Yeah, and but geekdom doesn't define. I mean, like, I mean, I think when you're, yeah, it's like you're like saying like I'm a geek. It's like, well, I am basing the uh, like the formation of my personality is based off of this. Being like I'm a gay. It's like, you know, I also am white. Yeah. I, <laughs> this is how well, I know right. Well, Russia, right now, Russia is not imprisoning geeks. Do you think mm. that, what, what characters, were there any books that you, or TV that you think does that well? I mean, did you, what did you feel about this book? And then, in general, what do you think, Hannah? One of the best portrayals of uh, the LGBT experience I've ever seen is Skins, seasons three and four. Well, I've wanted to watch that. Oh my God! You guys like seriously? You mean the UK, tonight. UK or USA? UK, UK yeah. skin season three and four. The relationship between Naomi and Emily is one of the most sincere, authentic, grounded. Like they each maintain their personalities as people. Mm -hmm. Like it's wonderful, you know. Like I said, it's kind of like when people. It's kind of like when men try and write for women characters. They're like, I'm pregnant. Ah! <laughs> freaking out. It's like, I'm a girl. You know? So it's like one of the best, like one of the most interesting moments. I was in a script meeting once and somebody said to a male writer, they are like, I'm really having trouble writing this girl. And another male writer says, honestly, just name her John and then switch the name at the end. Mm. And I was oh, like, that's great. Wow. <laughs> there's, um, there's this great BuzzFeed article actually um, 
called uh, that says 11 filmmakers who expertly answered the question why do you write strong female characters and uh, I just remember it because there's so many great quotes in there like Joss Whedon says um, because you're still asking me that question mm, yeah. <laughs> and the so George R. R. Martin one was really good too uh, the interviewer asks him there's one thing that's interesting about your books I noticed that you write women really well and really different where does that come from and then George mm -hmm. says you know I've always considered women to be people <laughs> oh, women are people. That's really good. So good. Have, you guys, on, have you guys been watching Orange is the New Black? I yes, know, don't, no spoilers. Okay, no spoilers. Okay, no, I'm sorry. Okay. Almost done. I really, you know what? I was putting it off because I didn't know if I'd like it, and I was being kind of snobby about it, thinking, oh, this is going to be lame. It's just going to be like, you know, all the stereotypes. I really like it a lot. I yeah. really yeah. 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 What I love about the main character about Chapman is that, and this is not spoilery, is that she's, you know, she's very modern in the sense that she's pretty ambiguous about her sexuality. You know, mm -hmm. she just loves right. who she loves. Mm -hmm. She's, you know, open to whatever happens to come her way that is interesting to her. It's just, it's, it's a very modern take on sexuality that I think is representative yeah. of a lot of, you know, especially women's views on, on that kind of thing. I, I always wonder about that, though, because I get kind of tired of, I don't know, like, okay, so I guess I'm outing myself a little bit. So I consider myself bi, mm -hmm. and that no one uses that term anymore. And I don't know if there's this weird bi shame. So now people, instead of saying they're bi, they just say, oh, sexuality, I don't like to label it. So they just well, never use the term bi. And I'm like, is that something that was like a 90s reference that I'm still using that I'm not supposed to be using anymore? Or is it like all like the gay community looks down upon it, the straight community looks at me like tough, I'm sweaty? It's a tough place to be, Bonnie. Like, honestly, like every time I'm on an LGBT panel, they always have a bisexual representative. And by the way, 100% of the time, it's a woman. It's never a bisexual man mm -hmm. because I think that's, you know, less um, acceptable to the society and whatnot. Right. Um, but anyway, so the, the bisexuals on the panel always express the same thing, which is like, if I am physically attracted to men and physically attracted to women in equal respects or in sometimes even unequal respects, mm -hmm. why does that make me any less valid a member of the community? Right. You know? I think that what people get up in arms about is having to defend, like, their love. So, you know, uh, heterosexual peoples are obviously like, well, no, love is sacred. See, it's between men and women. And obviously homosexuals are like, well, okay, but it's okay that I love this person too. So people naturally are starting to resent, like, well, couldn't you just choose to be in whatever acceptable blah, 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 blah you are? Well, not right. all heterosexuals say that love is only between a man and a woman. No, no, not heterosexuals. I'm talking about, like, super conservative, obviously. Ah, right. People, like, jumping well, into the argument. And that was know? what I wanted to say about the, the show, the, the Chapman's relationship with, um, what's her face? Alex. Laura, yeah, Alex. Okay. Yeah. Um, is, is that it's not, well, and whoever, it's not just about, it's not, just sex. I mean, is that she she truly loves her, and she it is about love. It is about. I mean, she's a real human being. She's she's not some stereotypical you know girl in prison. She's actually having these relationships with whoever that she's in love with at the time, you know, or has feelings for, or just wants to do it with. You know, it's like it's right. you, she's it's undefinable. And I and yeah, I really I love that. I love I, it. I don't envy bisexuality even a little bit. That seems like a very tough spot yeah, to be. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I rarely say anything about it just because I just don't, I, I don't like, I don't, I really don't like labels. I think labels are stupid. Um, whether you're a geek, whether you're gay, whether you're, uh, whatever, I can't think of any other cool ones. But <laughs> it's just, you know, brunette. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you should be, I think you should be. I think it should be who you are. I mean, like, if I said I was a feminist, it doesn't mean anything because there's so many different contradictory waves of feminism. And are you all of you. Wave? wave <laughs> one, two, three, four. Like, I'm pro, I'm pro, like, porn, but not human trafficking, you know? So it's like, I don't know where I fall into that. So, I mean, same thing. So if there's labels freak people out because everyone has a different opinion of what that label means. And it's not just about love. Is about just sex too. Like just because I'm attracted to someone doesn't mean I'm in love with them, and it shouldn't be gender specific. So I don't know. I just I I try not to get hung up on it, but you know, living in San Francisco too, it's it's constantly here and it's constant. I'm glad that there's so much gay pride, but it seems like 
anything that's not set black or white, you know, everything that's not gay or heterosexual, anything that falls into that gray space, people, like, are afraid to talk about it or they look down on it. And, I mean, most of my boyfriends in high school were bi, so I don't know what that says about me, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So, and I've had a lot of girlfriends in college that were only gay for those four years. And then, yeah. all of a sudden, they would no longer admit that they were ever with a girl. So, I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Now, what did you feel like um, as far as the, I mean, this is a historical novel, so it was, and I love this period of, uh, like, the ne late, late 1900, you know, late late 19th century, um, but what it, did anybody question, and I haven't done the research, so I wish I knew this, whether <laughs> this was true, that they had, like, lesbian clubs, and they were, people were, because it seemed like they had characters who were the Toms, they called them Toms, I guess. Yeah. Um, uh, it seemed like they were fairly out there with their sexual preference in, in a time that you feel like this is the Victorian era. Is this really, yeah, you know, that almost was, was, felt like fantasy to me that someone would, would be, it would be so acceptable. I was Although, super curious about that as well because I, yeah. I, I just have no idea how, how acceptable or how, how out people were back in those days. So it's very, um, I'm, I'm very curious to know if anyone in the audience in the chat room or on Twitter knows if that was, if that kind of thing was actually happening or if it was much more in the closet back then than we are led to believe by this book yeah. or if it was like underground but open in a way that people privy to the underground scene would know about. That's kind of right. how I feel. I feel like perhaps it was, it was more common than historically we know about, but if you were aware of it mm -hmm. and, and looking at, at it through someone like Nan's eyes, for example, that mm -hmm. it would be a lot more obvious. If you look at the Wikipedia entry for Tipping the Velvet, it actually, if you look under themes, mm -hmm. it does talk about the sexuality and whether or not that was, you know, accurate and that sort of thing. And um, they do say as far as fiction um, that, you know, there was some little bursts, short bursts of lesbian themes literary activity and obviously the 20s, I think the 1920s were kind of that era of anything goes and a lot of things were more public as far as like female and female relationships and mm -hmm. you know drug use and fun stuff like that but I mean I feel like it's always been around I mean I feel like well, yeah, but it, it felt like, you know, it was obviously, I mean, look at Turing. I mean, it's not, it's not like something that ever during any period other than probably the Roman and Greek times, it wasn't as if there was a time when that was acceptable in an open way where it seemed like the characters in this book, especially... You know, I always feel like, it, and I, I'm just going out on a limb here, I feel like if you were part of the aristocracy, anything was fine, as long as you kept it under wraps and it was done under mm -hmm. your roof. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. Feel like sex, because just think of how much crap that went on in those opium dens in the Victorian era. And that well, was it all went on. It's just whether people were open about it in that. There was there was basic social... I, I feel like they probably were. They don't think Victorians were quite as prude. If they were rich, they could kind of get away with it. But because mm -hmm. there yeah, was really, there's like no middle everybody. class, really, right? I mean, there was, but I don't know. Um, I would say, say that anybody, like, yeah, like you said, members of the aristocracy were probably privy to doing whatever, the, like, actions they wanted to. Yeah. Um, so it's probably like, oh, well, if this tickles your fancy, you might need to talk to the dandelion. <laughs> we actually have a, in, a kind of related question from Hannah on Twitter who says, could you please discuss the language use and what you thought of the term gay slash queer? And... This confused the hell out of me yeah. in this book. I could not yeah. figure because sometimes they would use the term gay three times in a sentence and I'm pretty sure they all meant different things. <laughs> I, could, I could tell that she was doing, I mean the, the, the very title of the book is a euphemism for a lesbian sexual act so she, she basically... I would hope it wouldn't just wait. I'm confused. What? Type in the chat which sex act you mean. What? what? Oh. It, they mean, <laughs> you know what it is. Act it out with the lesbian mean. sex yeah. act. I mean oh. do heterosexuals not do this? Do they, all they do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so it's not like well, no, it's just but a it's term for a sex act. Lady well, having a great used, time sex Sexuality act. ambiguous. But oh, it was also it was it was it was a terminology used specifically for girl w women doing this versus you know what I'm saying? Yes. Yeah. I do. Was, I'm just because I'm just so when they met yeah, when they said sometimes not velvet. <laughs> sometimes when they said gay girls, I thought they meant prostitutes. <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I thought no, I'm, sometimes I'm with you. I'm I with you. Sometimes I think that meant process. Sometimes I think they meant happy. 
Okay. And sometimes I think they meant lesbian. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but I sometimes they would use them interchangeably in ways that I did not understand. Same yeah. with queer. And, and queer, it was does that mean weird? So maybe sometimes she was just doing it herself. Just to like screw And then with they us. use uh, if you're pretend if you're a male prostitute turning tricks, they call that renting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm thinking, and, wow, my apartment lease is so much sexual. I know. And I queen. Like, oh, if that's renting, where's the sublet? Like, I'm renting. <laughs> they, were, they were talking about queens, and I was wondering, is that the actual like like historical oh, queen? Uh, term, I don't think like that. where we the have, word queens came from. We have some comments in chat saying that Sarah Waters says that it isn't necessarily historically accurate. So in a way, this is actually a uh, a God fan darn it. It, it is <laughs> and that it would have been nice if people could live more openly with who they are at that time. Yeah. So hey, people on the forums, it is a little bit of a fantasy. <laughs> I don't know. I still, I still believe that. I think this happened a lot. It just, you know, whoever writes history are the people that are alive to write it, and they can write however they want as far as they remember it. So who knows? Well, Maybe yeah, this yeah, it happened a lot. Yeah, but I mean, there there are scholars. You know, they're they're not just right wing Republicans writing history books. Sorry, I, mean, I, I just think that they're all the books that we read in <laughs> elementary school. Yeah, I don't. It's not Texas. those. <laughs> <laughs> now, there a, a couple people have some interesting questions from the forum. Maddie asks, "Did you all think it was justifiable how Nancy cast away her t entire family instead of just her sister after?" No, they what were the hell was with that? Yeah, what the hell was with her? She's like, I don't have a family. I'm like, actually, you have a family that loves you. I do it. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. And, and you know what? If you're gay and your family doesn't get it, you're okay to ditch them. But, <laughs> I don't think that's true. I don't think that's fair to say. I mean, really? That's, that's I, don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Was I that bitter? That it easy. sounds bitter. <laughs> no, I just think it's But it's like, you know, I, I feel like... I don't know. I wouldn't have done what Nancy did, but then again, it's like the same thing as we were talking about earlier. She's not like the super most relatable character. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Kind of a dick. But yeah. at the same time... But also, isn't she trying to better herself, and in that time it wasn't unheard of for someone to leave their family to go on adventures and not but really... But not never... I mean, she, they. She talked to before before she left. She talked to her mom more than I do, and my mom's like yeah. my best friend. They like like sent each other letters every week, and yeah, then suddenly to just like extreme. cut it off. Extreme. Yeah, especially since she was going to live a life that is basically self of self hatred, going to do all the you know the prostitution basically, yeah. which was really really sad. I mean, there were some some scenes in there where there was uh, she's pretending to be a guy, and then. There's a guy who's hiding, who thinks she's a guy, and it, all the stuff in the alley and stuff. It was just so sad to see all these yeah. people hiding who they are and and being so unhappy because yeah. of what society. I don't know. I guess I don't equate. Um, you know, my my parents aren't tyrants or anything, but I don't I don't equate happiness with being best friends with my parents. So I don't I don't know. Like her. I think that. Her, I, I frankly think that the only thing that I would want to encourage is that, um, let's say your family does, you know, preemptively if she left because she was like, oh, they're going to reject this, blah, blah, blah. Or, like, you know, if, if your family is going to be prone to rejecting uh, your sexuality for what it naturally is, I think the best case scenario for you as a person is to remain exactly who you are and mm -hmm. to maintain that same respectful, loving relationship from your side to show them that the only person that's choosing to act differently is actually you. Mm -hmm. I'm so me. You know? That's, that's, I don't know, that's good advice. I, I don't know. I mean, I had friends in high school who when they came out, they got, if not beaten, they got kicked out, and their families still haven't talked to them. And well, it's, it's, really, like, it's those hard to be, it, it's definitely, I will tell you, Hannah, it's, it's awesome if you can be the better person, but um, it's hard. It's hard to take that high road initially. I think as you get older, you realize that people are kind of set in their ways, and sometimes they just have to love them for who they are and not try to change them as well. Mm -hmm. But I yeah. think initially it's 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 a hard road to like take that upper hand and be like, yeah, you know what? I'm just gonna forgive you and move on. And that's and if you can do it, kudos, because it took me a long time to like. And I, it wasn't family necessarily. It was friends that were just like wouldn't believe it. So I don't know. It's hard. But you know, in this book, in this book, I definitely think it's, it's in that time period. It wasn't unheard of for daughters and sons to leave the family and not make contact anymore. Daughters, really? I mean, I feel like daughters were 
definitely had a lot. I think it depends had a lot what, part, what part of the financial ladder you were. If you were aristocracy, yeah, I mean, you had to keep in contact because of social standing. But I think in a single woman living alone in that era, I don't think that you was, couldn't. You, you know, had to have a companion. I, you had to have a companion all the time, even if you were. A companion. Really, I guess I'm thinking if you get kicked out. <laughs> I guess I'm thinking more if you get kicked out of the family or if they can't afford... Well, but, she, but that was the thing. She didn't get kicked out. She preemptively left. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, and she felt thought, bad about doing the snobby Christmas present thing. That's true. She yeah. bought them all. Yeah, you're right. You're right. You're right. Crappy, left, and was upset that Annie was pissed at her. And then... Yeah. I mean, yeah, the Annie thing was definitely difficult. Like, that would have been hard to kind of work through. But the rest yeah. of her family just wanted to hang out with her and see her and hear about her you're awesome right, new right. life in London. Mm -hmm. You're right. What do you think about um, the the oh, and when we when we did the Outlander novel, people were very offended that uh, Jamie spanked Claire. By the way, that's becoming a TV show. Hello. I know. Hi. I can't wait. I'm so I'm getting stars just so I can watch that show. Basically, <laughs> I'm so excited. I've not had any reason to watch stars in the past. Yeah, yeah no. I'm actually. It's funny. I made friends with the um, script advisor on that show, so hopefully I'll get some good dirt on it. But um, yeah, I'm excited for that show. Though it should just be called Spanks. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Sorry, Felicia. Go ahead. That joke. Anyway, go ahead. Yes, you were saying. Uh, well, but I was just saying that there was a lot. There was like a lot of underlying abuse between Diana and Nan, which was in a much different context. But did everybody have as as? Because we automatically were like, oh my god, that guy is the worst. He and it, it was terrible what he did. But did you have this visceral reaction like about this sort of very masochistic situation between Nan and Diana? You liked it, Hannah, didn't you? <laughs> there's nothing wrong with a little I mean, role play. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like this, I just felt like you know we're reading like a sexy little novel. Just yeah. I, I kind of feel like you know I don't know maybe it's a nice thing to sometimes think about. It's fine. <laughs> I'm with um, you. I'm with okay. you on this. Okay. I was like the role play. The, the, it wasn't really role play because I feel like. Diana was yep. always kind of in the position of power, so there wasn't really much role play to it. It was kind of just their life. Yeah. Um, but the kind of parading her around like a little toy was a little weird. Yeah, that was, I didn't like that part. That was sad for me. Because and then she just kind of sat around and didn't do anything all day except like wander the hallways and try on makeup. And that was kind of depressing. I mean, that was... A little soul-sucking, huh? Yeah, I mean, we've yeah, all been there. Very but... dark. <laughs> we've all been there. Go ahead. Yeah, right. Wait, what? Play. Um, okay. Wait, 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 it kind of reminded me of uh, In Crucial Start where she's, when she's the mistress oh, yes. of the, yep. yeah, of, what's her name? I can't uh, remember. Oh, totally. But she makes her, the, yes. diamond. the diamond, wearing the diamond. Yes. yes. And she makes her clean her house and stuff. Yeah. Holy crap. I was like, Kyla, you're totally right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, uh, Kyla. Uh, uh, um, so uh, Hannah's going to leave in a minute after we finish this book in a couple minutes and then we'll talk very briefly about the alt and uh, look at our cat dragon submissions. Yeah, but before yeah, Hannah leaves... You, know you can't leave. I'm not drunk enough to improperly flirt with you. Oh my god. There's no way to flirt with me. I'm a brick wall. So, <laughs> um, well, let's do some casting. Did anybody watch the TV show, by the way? We should talk no. about that for a couple minutes yes. and then we'll casting and then we'll we're done. The t I, I watched a little on um, on the, the the YouTube's and it was not it was not the best I think. It's not accurate. Oh no, flat oyster. Oh no, it's oh, bad cockney. No. Oh, it's bad. I'm gonna it's watch it. I can't bad. wait. And you know what? The actors that are in this are actually and they're always in like BBC mystery stuff yeah. like Marple and like yeah. Yeah, Inspector totally. Lewis and they're really it's good bad. actors but bad. Bad, bad Cockney accents and bad dialogue. It was just horrible. Did you see the French Saunders? Someone posted on yes. the forum. And it yes. was a parody of French and Saunders who did Ab Fab. They did yeah. a parody of the... Oh, of man. Yeah. Okay, I gotta look that up. You have to look it up on YouTube. I'll, it's tweet, I'll tweet it out. I'll tweet it later. Yeah, tweet it out, Bonnie. Tweet it out, Bonnie B. I will. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's do some casting. Now, besides the casting, let, let's just go from the book perspective. Um, what uh, what casting would you guys? I I would throw out, and this is just me. We had we had a couple of uh, suggestions from the forums. Uh, I just found some Sherlock fanfic. No oh God, don't do no, it. Send it to John Locke. John Locke. Send it to me, Veronica. Send it to me. Okay. Jazz like suggested is, Nancy so as Hillary Swank, Kitty as Emily Blunt, Flo as Amber Benson, and Diana as Jamie Murray. 
which I thought uh, was good. I don't know who that is. I could see Amber Benson as Florence. Yeah. No, I could too. Um, By the way, I, I did want to bring that up, that that, for me, was the best representation of a lesbian relationship was Willow and Tara on Buffy. So yeah. I'm just going to put that out there. That made me happy. Even though they fought and one of them died. But anyway. <laughs> um, okay. My two leads would be uh, Ethel from Downton Abbey and then the girl who played Summer on the OC. Wait, who, for which ones? For which roles? Uh, Ethel. Ethel, the, girl, the woman who had the baby out of wedlock. Sorry, spoilers. No, no, um, no, I know that, but for Nan. which roles in the book? Okay, for Kitty, or for Nan. Okay. The Downton Abbey actress. And then Summer from the OC. What, what was her name? She has dark hair and big uh, eyes. Yeah. I know who you're talking about. Rachel, Rachel Bilson. Rachel, Rachel Bilson. Yeah. What about That's you? Right. Yeah, Nan. Nan is the, is the blonde. No, brunette. I mean, uh, Nan is blondish hair, right? Yeah, not blondish hair. And and Kitty and had like darker hair and dark eyes. That's what I. For some reason, I, I thought that Kitty in my brain, I pictured Kitty as a blonde. Oh, maybe I'm messing up. No, you're not. I don't think you are. No, I think but I had the same thing. I got them mixed up. Yeah. yeah. Weird. I wonder why. Anyway, it is. Um, <laughs> anybody else have any casting suggestions? It's funny because they're always so predictable. So I'm going to last. It's funny that 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 they said Emily Blunt because I just pictured Emily Blunt as everybody. You know why I think I'm picturing her that way? Because there is that girl on Boardwalk Empire that works in the club that wears a little hat and has the short blonde hair. I think that's who I was picturing her as. Oh yeah, okay. Did you guys watch Boardwalk Empire? Oh yeah. Is Nan blonde? No, but is. Nana's really? like dirty, mousy brown hair. Yeah. Who has dirty, uh, mousy? Yeah, she definitely does mousy. Who? Yeah. Kelly McDonald. Kelly McDonald on Boardwalk Empire? Um, I'm not sure who that is. No, Whoever. Kelly McDonald is the main, the one that's married. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. I love her. I do too. Um, well, Hannah, did you have any casting at all? No, you don't have to. I mean, uh, Kristen Stewart as all the roles. <laughs> <laughs> they can all do it. Who Kristen Stewart and Emily Blunt? And I'm happy with that. Yeah. yeah. Kristen Stewart, you're coming back. That's my Kristen Stewart impression. Wow, good. <laughs> is, is that, that her Joan Jett? I'm confused. Is that her playing Joan Jett? I don't remember. That's her playing everything. <laughs> like, uh, uh. So I had um, Nan down as either Nina Dobrev from Vampire Diaries or Christina Ricci. Maybe? I don't know. I like to see the kitties. Okay. And then Kitty, Eva Green. Because <laughs> I pick Eva Green for everything. Eva Green is my girl, Benedict Cumberbatch. Let's be yeah. honest. Yeah. See, can if there's a female person? Benedict Cumberbatch, it is Eva Green for me. I'm just saying. Green. Uh, Eva Green is female? Okay, so have you watched Camelot? Did you watch the series Camelot? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember... If you saw yeah, Camelot, yeah. you know what scene I'm talking about. Naked witch lady in the pond. Yeah, she likes to get naked, Eva Green. She was she in was the dream. She was also in John, James Bond. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in the James Bond. Bond. She, uh, anyway, I could keep going. But, um, anyway, okay. And then as far as, like, guy characters, because we didn't talk about the guys at all. You no. know, there's Walter, the manager, that gets it together with Kitty, which I didn't understand that at all. And then, of course, there's um, Ralph who was Florence's brother, who had problems giving a speech, and then she butts in and gives a speech. Do you remember that? So, yeah. did you guys think that the guy characters were good characters, or do you think they were just thrown in there? <laughs> what is this, uh, Veronica? This is who I pictured her as. Fantastic for Kitty. Who is yeah. that? Um, She's blonde. She, that's that's from Babette the from Boardwalk Empire. That's her name. Oh, okay. Uh, it looks like it's just from the movie. Yeah. Honey, that's you should be that character. Um... Yeah, well, no, I think characters. the guy characters, though. I think the guy characters were good. I mean, I think that, obviously, the focal point were all the women characters. They were the yeah. most dimensional. But the guy mm-hmm. characters were very supportive and, you know, very much like women in other books about men. I know. I was thinking that, too. Mm-hmm. I was thinking that it was such a reverse because women in most yeah. major books are, like, the side characters. Yeah. And put in for plot points. Exactly. Really... Just, like, move, the, move the plot forward. Thank you. And it was kind of nice to have a book with all women and then dudes for the plot points. I yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. Well, Hannah has to go because it's not... Uh, but uh, we have to discuss our alt books and go over um, oh. Cat Dragons. 
and everything. Cat but dragon. Thanks for being on, guys. Yes, I'm really fancy. Yeah. Thank you, Thanks, Hannah. Hannah. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you for filling one of my personal vaginal fantasies by being on vaginal fantasies. Also, <laughs> chat room, chat room strongly suggests that you come back on as a regular sometime. Yeah. So Aww. I can't wait. And we agree. Yes. Aww. You guys, Definitely. Just, I will read all sorts of porn, so don't even worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye, Hannah. <laughs> Yay. Yay! That was awesome. Yay. It worked, guys. Yeah. Root. Yay! Um, so let's talk quickly about Swords Point, and then we'll do Cat Dragons and announce the next month book. Okay. It, who actually read Swords Point, though? Because I, I started. I started reading it thinking it was the main, and I then know. it wasn't until I did. I did. I see you in person. You did see me in person at Comic Con. You were like, "Oh, what? The main? <laughs> the Velvet?" Yeah. So I but saw it, and then I started so immediately reading it. What? Um, haven't you read the alt book by accident before? No. This is the oh, first time I've time? actually... Oh. No, yeah. you're right. I started no, reading you did. Ghost Sorry, Planet. Sorry, I would blow pick. my nose over You're here. right. I started reading the alt pick for Ghost Planet. <laughs> oh, you did. It was better. <laughs> that would be better. <laughs> and I fixed it. Um, but anyway, um, Swords Point? Okay, well, so not enjoying it. I know. Let me read the description first. Um, okay, let me put the book in. It is by Ellen Kushner. And let me click on the thing so it's... Uh, and it's, uh, where's, where's my description? I have my whole clip notes here. Oh, on the treacherous streets of Riverside, a man lives and dies by the sword. Even the nobles on the hill turn to duels to settle their disputes. Within this elite, elite dangerous world, Richard St. Vere is the undisputed master, as skilled as he is ruthless until a death by the sword is met with outrage instead of awe, and the city discovers that the line between hero and villain can be altered in the blink of an eye. And as you can see from the cover, this has a male-male romance um, in a very historical, somewhat like 17th century setting, so we went with the historical theme with both of our books. Um, I have read this book. I really, really enjoyed it, and uh, I've also read the sequel, and I'm a huge fan of this author, so that's why I, I liked it. I'm sorry. Um, I didn't like it then. No, you don't have to. No, no, no. I mean, listen, no. you don't have to like everything at all. What did you... <coughs> How far did you get on it? I think uh, you bogged down a little bit. On only about a third of the way through, mm -hmm. and I just... It was a lot of talking. <laughs> it is a very, it's a, it's a very of... florid sort of writing style, very dense. So you can't like skim mm -hmm. it. You gotta have to. You have to read it slowly, similar to Tim the Velvet, which is uh, as as overly sort of prose write. Written. I did like the relationship between Alex and Richard. Richard. Yeah. Um, I thought that was sweet, but I'll, uh, yeah. It's just I was not. Uh, I was. I think it was starting to get better when I realized that I was reading the wrong book, so I had to stop. <laughs> so maybe I should go back to it now and Did try you just to. Just like, say it got better it when you stopped reading it. <laughs> yes, I think it was getting better, and then I was like, "Oh crap! I'm reading the wrong oh, book. Okay. I need to speed read the actual pick." Um, and so I, I started with that one. But what I do you not... think? What do you think would make the book better for you? What would have made the story better for you? Do you think? More shit happening up front. Yeah, <laughs> that's kind like, of just where I'm going. I'm sorry. Away. Like, yeah, I, don't have, I don't have a PG way to put that. I'm sorry. It was just like the stuff was just not happening. There was. I felt like I, whenever we were with Richard and Alec, I felt like there was such an interesting connection between them because Alec is obviously very self-destructive. Yes. Has a mysterious past. We've and all so, had relationships like that. Yeah, exactly. So I never wanted to leave them, and when we went to the more intrigue, the the sort yeah. of intrigue and the aristocracy working behind the scenes to manipulate them and all that stuff, it was it was less compelling than the the, the sort of relationship and learning about these two main characters who, mm -hmm. through the piece, I think, you know, it's, an, it's a really cool arc and you learn a lot about Alec. Um, I actually found out there's a sequel Ooh. that I have not read that I have to read that, that talks about the end of their life and their relationship. Oh, I want to read that. I need to do that, yeah. But, uh, but to me, I agree, I agree with you, the, the more intrigue parts were much slower in their um, in the way they were written. I, that's how I am with romance books too. I could care less about like political stuff and all the like who has more power than the other person. Like, I don't care about any of that stuff. I always care about the actual intimate relationships. And I really liked Richard and Alec mostly because it's such a weird pairing to have like this ruthless assassin fall in love with a suicidal brat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean that's basically what it was, and it was an interesting love connection and love mix. Like, I, yeah. I wasn't expecting that, and so every time it was about them, 
I would I would turn my focus on for sure. But then, like you guys, when it went to the other characters, like I I just I don't know. I didn't I didn't care. And no, we had another character named Diane, which I thought was interesting. That was that was interesting. It was. Yeah, I was like, what's with that? I mean, I get you know the whole Greek Roman Diane thing, but I don't know. I was just. I didn't care about Ferris and all the lords, and I just didn't care about that. Like, I could care less about Machiavellian power plays. I'm all about... Oh, that's what my favorite. That's why. <laughs> really? So you well, like that I, whole, like, who's in charge of what kingdom crap? I mean, I, that's why I like Kushal's Dark, too, because it's sort of... It, there's a lot of world building and, and sort of plotting, but at the same time... Although I think that you see Fedri, uh, Fedre a lot more as a main character. I wish we could have spent even more time with Richard and Alec and, and spent a little less of a ratio with Michael yeah. and, and all his stuff. But um, It almost felt a little Shakespearean with those side characters. But... Very Shakespearean. Yeah. It, you're right. It was, uh, And we had a lot of mixed um, mixed feelings. I mean, Tipping the Velvet, universally, people really liked it, and they generally didn't like Nan's character, but they would recommend the book. Uh, right. on, I would say a bigger ratio. This one, we had people uh, like uh, Pointy Ears and uh, and Ocean. She, they loved the book, and they loved, and it was just the sumptuous sort of storytelling they loved, and then people were like, I can't, they were Veronica, it was either Veronica or Felicia. There was no middle yeah. ground, it felt yeah. like. There were, it's interesting, because I saw that too, when people, because it's great, when we since we've had this show, when people are reading the books, I don't know if you guys get this too, but people will tweet at me as they're reading, if they like it or don't like it, or if they're finding it difficult to read because they find the characters annoying. Um, and I love that. I love when people tweet at us because I'm reading the books about the same time. Though I do reverse reverse order, so I always read the alt before the major one. Mm -hmm. um, but it's fun to see that because it's good to see people's reactions. And I go on Goodreads and see too, but just to see people's reactions going, oh, this is taking too long. Why isn't there a sex scene? Or, oh, I don't like the political stuff. I just want romance. Or, hey, this world building's bogus. Like, it's good to get that reaction as I'm reading because it, it forces me to read faster to catch up with people to see what they're doing. Um, but, yeah, I agree. There's It was kind of a polar a polarity with this book. You either loved it or you hated it. There wasn't a lot of middle ground. Yeah, I mean, it's point. definitely stylistically different from what we're used to reading, which next month we're going to read, like, the trashiest, fastest books. I love it. I love it. <laughs> And um, also, I didn't. I had a hard time casting this. Did you cast anything? Oh, oh, oh no! I got Topher Grace. Really? <laughs> Which character? Yeah. And then I liked Colin Farrell as Richard because he's supposed to be dark oh, hair. Oh yeah. I, I Wait, don't know. Which one? Which one? You had Alec as Topher. Alec as Topher because he's supposed to have brown leaf, leafy brown hair, I think, or something like that. Kind of like <laughs> okay. from the other Aww. book. And then um, Diane Kruger as Diane because she's very pretty. And then Val right. Kilmer. Horn, the bad guy. I just got that John Valkyrie? Locke is a term for Sherlock fanfic. What just happened? What? Oh, that I just sad. got that John Locke is the term for John Watson and Sherlock <laughs> yeah. fanfic. Yeah. That, oh. Right. I just so you know, Setlock means um, people tweeting about uh, Sherlock 3 because no one wants to be spoiled. So if you see, like, behind-the-scenes photos and you tumble it or tweet it, you're supposed to put Setlock hashtag so people don't get spoiled. Though I will mention... That the teaser trailer for Sherlock season three did come out this weekend, so please look at that if you want to see spoilery, but not really spoilery images. And gotcha. you get to see John Watson's freaking big old mustache. <laughs> it looks seventies Tom of Finland mustache. I don't know how that's gonna fit in, but oh my God. <laughs> he has his own Twitter account. That mustache has his own Twitter account now. Of course it does. That's amazing. <laughs> amazing. Um, uh, okay, well, I think that's good. Thank you for reading along this month. I think we would universally say we would recommend uh, Tipping the Velvet, all of us. Would we recommend that? Yeah. You know, and I, yeah. I wanted to bring this up because I saw this. I was looking at Twitter while we were having this episode, uh -huh. and a lot of people were super excited that, A, we were reading um, lesbian fiction mm -hmm. and, and homosexual, like gay guy fiction too, but yeah. that we had Hannah on as a guest, and they were suggesting that we do this try to do this more. So, I mean, if we ever want to do another, you know, gay fiction month or something, have Hannah back, I think that would be kind of fun. Yeah. I think yeah. Hannah could come in and if we're read, I mean, if she wants to come back, she it is. Back anytime. Anytime. Yeah. We, you know, if, we, if you guys enjoyed us having a guest, let us know. Maybe we can... Uh, we can but there has been such, I think there was such a positive outpouring on Twitter 
Yeah, no, I think it's awesome. We that we were actually making an effort to do gay erotica. That also, I think on the, on the, on, and it's not, a, oh, well, it's not really erotica. It's romance. Well, uh, romance, it's, romance, sorry. We also have a thread on the forums under book discussion and recommendations of gay fantasy romance. A lot of people are, are suggesting things on there. Um, Sheriff found a book called The Shark Who Wrote a Seahorse. It's a shark shifter at odds with his attraction toward a sea Shark horse. Week! Shark Week! So, Yay. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be horny or not, but it might be interesting to check out. Hey, if anything <laughs> merges Sharknado with romance, I am there. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Veronica, before we announce next month's books, why don't you show everybody your cat dragon? The cat yeah. Okay, last cat month time. we read Fire Lord's Lover. And we had a whole discussion, and Veronica set it up, and you go, you take it away. <laughs> setting it up, I'm trying to. Hold on. A second. Okay. Take it away. So Keep talking. Um, one the in Fire Lords, or no, it wasn't Fire Lords Lover. It was the C. L. Wilson, um, our alt built book last month. Uh, had a had a creature called a Terran that was uh the focal point and what the main lead character could turn into, and it was described in the book as sort of a feline dragon. Uh, sort of venomous uh, mix, mix. It was a very weird. Um, it's just a really weird idea and an animal that we would not be familiar with. Mm -hmm. And we all coined it cat dragon. <laughs> so, um, and, and, and there was a, a con not a contest, but a call to arms because people were saying, uh, Veronica needs to be the cat dragon with Kyla riding her. Is that what the deal was? Yes, that was, that was basically it. Can you see this? Yeah, no. No, not yet. Yeah. No? You, you can't, can't see, see my anything. cat dragon? No. Go ahead and screen share. I was. I was screen sharing. Not I thought I was. It. All right, it must have decided it didn't like. Okay, we'll do oh, this. No. Okay, so okay. you can see it now? There we go, Let's yeah. Okay, yeah. so this that is... Happened. Hold on, shoot. <laughs> Technology yeah. is trying to... No, we're getting it. Me. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> do you see a... Uh, oh, oh, boy. That's, a so great that's, that's by Sean. Who was the first one? Um, the first one, this one, that is Kevin Porter. Oh, I, I love that. that. I love that one. That was one of the first. <laughs> yeah. This one, a little more, a little sketchy. Oh, that's, I love how just you're so grumpy. <laughs> Basically, in that cat. one, that's just a cat with bangs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that is really just grumpy a cat. cat. With bangs. Grumpy cat. <laughs> and I'm just like, woo! And like, this Arr. one I love. Oh. <laughs> I that's one love of this my one. favorites. I and it says so like majestic. Years old. I'd read that comic. <laughs> Make but I have a mouse in my mouth. Very Adventure Timey. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. <laughs> this one, a little more photorealistic. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that you can do the movie. It's yeah. like a movie with Bonnie Burton as the voice of Cthulhu and Bonnie yeah, Cumberbatch in every Bonnie male Bonnie role, Burton. written and directed by Felicia Day. Yeah. I love well, that. I'm going to my IMDb. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> this one, which is also just a cat with bangs. Oh, oh, I love it. Adorable. Just like you, Veronica. Be quiet. <laughs> yeah. It does. This That's one. Cool. Realistic. Which is, that's just me wearing a cat hoodie. And a what? There you are. Wait, <laughs> Hang on, wait. Oh, what? Wait, what? Oh, you look on. Anime. I want to say I can't see it. You, you can't see oh. it. Oh, look at that. What? Why do I have short hair? What's going on? Oh, that's, that's a good what? point. You do have very no. short hair. I love Whatever. it. It's like makeup. <laughs> right, and then this one, which I think... That's my favorite. <laughs> probably my favorite. Oh, yeah. <laughs> get a bottle of Jack Daniels. Wow. Because you got the bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> and and like, I want that on a t-shirt. Yeah, so me personally, too. Personally, this one I think looks the most like me and Kyla, which I think is hilarious. Yeah, I do too. Um, I love it. I love the little paws. These, I think uh. these two are my favorite. Tame, this one. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this yeah. one and, and this one. So which is, which is going to be our winner? I don't I think that one is the winner. Yeah, that yeah, becomes yeah, winner. That has to be the winner. That's my personal favorite. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. Then <laughs> ghostwaffleart.tumblr.com. <laughs> so, so Kyla's going to send all the, or not Kyla, I'm sorry, Veronica's going to send all these to me, and I'll put them in uh, vaginalfantasy.com, so I'll put it in our Tumblr blog. Oh, good. Uh, and so yeah. everyone can see them. And then there were some honorable mentions. Someone was very nice because I was, like, feeling kind of left out, so... Someone had me writing Cthulhu. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, that was a good Thank one you for, for making me feel included. And there were some there were some mashups where we were all writing the cat dragon. So uh, I didn't see that Felicia, one. Felicia would be like in the background. Yeah, yeah. So her, I think, yeah, I mean, elf, elf the thing. I think I think our fans are very artistic and kudos to all of you. So applause. Yeah, thank you very applause. much, guys. Yay. You guys are the thank best. Thank you for entertaining us so and making us look awesome. Yeah. So for next month, um, since you guys, 
you know, these were definitely books. I try to mix up the sort of commitment level of our books. Like some of them, like I knew this month would be, these would be longer reads. They're a little bit more elaborately written. They're longer, a little more involved. So I try to, you know, mix it up. And next month, is it's very fast. It'll be very fast. You guys can read sequels even. These are both number one in um I'm excited. In series. And the theme is... Wait, is it this book? Space Assassins! It's not this book, is it? Because I already no. bought it. No, no you can read that too. Uh, <laughs> that. So <laughs> Space Assassins is our theme of the month, and our two picks are Assassins in Love by Chris the Lake. It's <laughs> just right there. <laughs> on the nose. I haven't read... Uh, I don't know if there's another one out in this series, but... Um, that's our primary main pick, and our secondary pick is called Born of Night, and it's by Sher uh, Sherilyn Kenyon. Um, it's the League number one, so there are definitely several out in that series. So you literally, these are the kind of books you could read in a night, or at least I could. You could speed read them, and they're very fun. I really hope everybody enjoys them, and uh, hey. and they are excited. Amazing. Yeah, I'm too. I'm pretty Me excited. Too. Space assassins. Do they assassinate? Don't, 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 don't tell me. Don't tell me. I know, no, and our hangout will be on August 27th, so, you know, they're faster books, so we'll be able to all read, hopefully, within the time, whichever mm -hmm. ones you want to read. Um, so and I wanted to thank people, for, uh, if you wouldn't mind, at the end of this, yeah. because um, so many of our fans came up to us at both VidCon and Comic-Con, yeah. uh, and I want to say thank you, especially the people that came to our... Um, Obviously, our panel at VidCon, where we had a stackable wine so that we were in character, i.e. not sober. Though Felicia didn't drink anything, but the rest wow. of us did. So I want to say thank you to the people that came to our VidCon panel, and also at Comic-Con, mm -hmm. who came to watch us play board games at the Geek & Sundry headquarters and brought us gifts like Tentacle Kitty. Yay, and, Tentacle um, Kitty! Come on over there. That brought yeah, us, like, cool... Cool fingernail uh, things. Yes, espionage, yes. cosmetics. Yeah. And yeah, then my space um, nails. free wine and people <laughs> brought us mead and things. So I just want to say thank you so much to our fans for being so awesome and giving us free stuff. Though we love the fans that don't give us stuff too, but just I forgot. All fans are good. Yeah. I forgot a very important uh, uh, cat dragon pick that oh, I think uh -oh. needs to go mentioned. <laughs> oh god. It is the clay oh. cat dragon. Uh, from um, yeah. her name is, oh is Omalora. Sorry, Danielle. Danielle uh, oh. at Omalora. Uh, she yeah. mentioned that I forgot her, and I did. And wow. I'm sorry, you made a cat dragon out of clay with our yeah. faces on it. That, that, that one nice. deserves a prize. And, and I we... like how thin I look. <laughs> <laughs> you do look very Just bones. You look good. Your hair is excellent. It's the clay Thank diet. You. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so thank you, thank say, you, Danielle. Also, yeah, I want to say, you know, thank you for all of our fans that send us pictures on Twitter and keep us entertained yeah. in between episodes because this is why we do this is for awesome people like you. It's so awesome, you. and please join yes. the forums. Uh, check out the Goodread forums. It'll be in the metadata below uh, tomorrow, or you can just check uh, search Goodreads for Vaginal Fantasy. Um, there are a lot of people on there inter uh, re interacting, talking about other books they're reading, and meeting up, even in person. So we, we love this community, and we love being a part of it. And thank you for reading along with us. Yay. All right, we'll see you next month. Bye. Bye, Bye guys. Thank you.